Okay, this is the chapter 5, section 4, skill 2, number 4, example 4. And on it, I have shown already that R, which is representing the speed, is measured in kilometers per hour. And that means the input of the function is hours, and the output will be kilometers per hour. Whereas with the second function, which is the number of liters of gasoline, given by g of x, is going to have an output of liters and an input of kilometers, or x. So if we look at part A, the question is asking how many kilometers does the car travel? Well, that's another way to ask for the distance. And since they didn't specify net distance or total distance, we can assume that they're going to be the same. And indeed, if we look up here, the speed, which is going to be the velocity in this case, because this is always positive, is going to have a positive accumulation for the entire time. So this distance will actually be the accumulation from 0 to 2 on that R function. If we look at part B, it says find the rate of change with respect to time of the number of liters. So on this one, we're looking for these words, find the rate of change with respect to time, means I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time of the number of liters. Well, that's our g of x. Now what's going to be a little tricky on this one is that x is not t. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So I'll hit the g first, then I will hit the x. So the inside will remain unchanged when I hit the g, and then I'll multiply by a dx dt at the back. So if I finish that up, I'll get a g prime for some value of x times dx dt, which is our radi or excuse me, our rate or the speed. Remember the derivative of position is going with respect to time is going to be our velocity or our rate. So looking at this, we are told to find it when t is 2. Well, t is viable input only for the r function. It is not viable input for the x for g. So that means we've got to figure out what x is, and x is going to be the number of kilometers we have traveled by the time t equals 2. Well, you notice up here in part a that that's exactly what we were figuring out. We were figuring out the number of kilometers that were traveled in those first two hours. So we're going to compute this on our calculator, and then we're going to plug it in to our g. And I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator, and then we'll do some dimension analysis. So on the calculator, I have put r into y1, and I have put g into r2, or excuse me, into y2. So let me move this so we can see it. So here I've got my y1 is my r, my y2 is my g. And to get the distance that is traveled in part a, I need to accumulate from 0 to 2 on that y1. So on the home screen, I'm going to accumulate on y1 of x with respect to x from 0 to 2. Diamond enter, and then I'll wait for that to come up, and it is 206.370 kilometers. So that distance is now going to be plugged in to this g prime. So one of the nice things about the AP people is they will allow you to take derivatives and evaluate them at points just on your calculator. You don't have to manually take the derivative and then plug in x. You can just do the derivative on your calculator. So notice I covered up with my calculator, but we'll have g prime of, of that 206.370 times r of 2. So in order to get this on our calculators, we are going to do the derivative of g, so that second 8, g was stored in y2, and then we're going to multiply that by y1, which is our r of 2. Now if I hit enter right now, I'm going to get an expression that involves x, and I need to evaluate it when x is this 206.370. So what I'm going to do is I will set up my such that x equals and go grab it and hit enter. Now if I hit enter, I end up with 6. Now we also want to find what the dimensions are. So if we look at the dimensions, we're thinking about 
the slope on G and the output on R. So if I come up here and I look at G, slope is a rise over run. So my rise is going to be liters, my run is going to be in kilometers. And if I look at R, the output, that's a Y coordinate, that's going to be kilometers per hour. So if I finish this up, I can see that the kilometers will cancel and I will get liters per hour, which makes sense given that we want the rate of change with respect to time of the number of liters of, gallons, or liters of gasoline. So we get that in liters per hour, so it's a rate per time. Okay, the final part of this, part C, is a little bit challenging. So the reason it's challenging is because people often use the wrong unit. So we have to kind of keep track of what the units are. The question is, how many liters of gasoline have been used by the car when it reaches a speed of 80 kilometers per hour? So we want the number of liters and we have the speed. So if we think kind of breaking it down, if we want liters, we're not going to get liters out unless we have a proper input for liters. Remember, the liters are coming out of the G function. So what goes into the G function is the kilometers. So we need the kilometers. Well, if you think about what we did on part A, we got the kilometers that were traveled by doing an accumulation on R. So that means in order to get those kilometers, we're going to have to accumulate the R. Well, we can't accumulate the R unless we know the limits, so that means we need to know the time. And the time is what we're going to get from the speed, because we know the speed, we need the time. We know that the R of T is 80, we need the time that goes with it. So first we're going to find the time, and we will do that by solving for when R of T equals 80. Once we have that, then we can find the kilometers that we have traveled in that amount of time by doing the accumulation from 0 up to t on that speed function. Then once we have this, that will be the distance that we have traveled that we will then plug into g in order to find the liters. So let's walk through this on the calculator. Again, I still have y1 is my r, and y2 is my g. So I'm going to clear this, go to f2 and solve for when y1 of x equals 80. I'll solve that with respect to x with the diamond enter. That is now representing my time, and I see up here that I have two different times, so I'm probably going to have to use just the positive one. So I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use to limit your options to just the t that's greater than or equal to zero. Before you hit enter on solve, you can trap where you look for your solutions by using the such that button. So this button right here, we can do <laughs> such that x is less or greater than or equal to 0. So to access the greater than or equal to zero, 0, you will hit the diamond and then go all the way down to your decimal point. If we look, I'll scoot this up, if we look at our decimal points here, you can see that I've got a little less than on the 0 and I've got a greater than above the, the decimal point. So to get greater than or equal to, I do diamond with the decimal. So that's what I've just done here. I've got diamond with the decimal, that's got to be greater than zero, now hit diamond enter, and that'll give me just the positive one. So I've got my time is 0.331, so now if I want to find the kilometers, I need to take that time and use it as I'm accumulating. So that means I'm going to accumulate now on y1 of x with respect to x from zero up to that time, which is 0.331, 4532076588 hit enter and this will tell us the number of kilometers that we have traveled which is 10.794 and now i need to take that number of kilometers and plug it into the g function so that was stored in y2 so i can do that on my calculator by typing y2 coming up to the 10.794 turning it black. If I hit enter, I get all those digits without having to worry about rounding error. And I can hit enter and I get 0 0.537 liters of gasoline.